the sound so we don't have an echo. Yeah, baby. All right, that's better. What's up? <clears throat> so, we're going to be playing some Blitz and Rapid Chess. It's Monday. Looks like kind of a quiet Monday here, at least on Lee Chess. There, uh, yesterday, there were like 90,000 players online. Um, <clears throat> not so quiet in my building where they're constructing. They seem to have taken a lunch break or something. Anyway, I apologize for any noise. Apologize for any noise on the stream, other than the droning of my voice. What's up, guys? Astro Baker, to see you. Tough Simon yesterday. <clears throat> yesterday, I was playing um, some interesting games in the Simul. There was one game I, I was unsure about. Okay, let's see which one. Oh, Bob. Bob. I remember Bob lost. Bob sacked a piece that didn't work or something. Yeah, I wasn't sure about the ending of Bob's game, what had happened there. But, um, good simul. Some early players abandoned their games early, like we lost a yesterday. I didn't understand. Yeah, like Imre Barty just left the game. Time out, White is victorious. He lost on time. Ayeste just left on move four. What's up with that? We had, um, is another, another game I don't understand where Black resigned. Here's a player that resigned. What's that about? I didn't know I was winning and he resigned. <clears throat> but apparently this was a good move I found. Okay, I just have a big advantage. This is a really good move, 95. Asabi, what do you think? Good move? Hmm. Finding tactics at zero 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 ten and cent ten cent upon loss. Finding tactics in the simul. We are live. Very true. Quiet Monday here. Astrobe, what did you do? Yeah. Yeah, what are you doing there? You did it again. You resigned. What are you doing? I told you not to resign. Why did you resign and why did you play pawn takes F3? Is it that bad? Oh, you, you just realized that I had the fork. I didn't see it, so don't worry. I did not see this fork, dude. So very likely I wouldn't have seen it. Pretty much a resignation, but okay. Yeah, you're, you're not in a good position there after pawn takes. What did you do wrong? Rookie four was a little too provocative. A lot of pieces that want to go through that E4 square here. Let's see this. Astrobe with white against the Nimzovich. E5 main line, knight D5. C4, kind of unusual. This is the main move. Knight C3, so you know. This is a theoretical new move theoretical novelty the engine is giving no credit for bishop d3 i didn't think that was such a bad idea wow i didn't i didn't even think i was better here that's crazy so apparently i should play g6 bishop g7 And apparently I can take this, wow, allowing knight e4, because your bishop's hanging. Oh. Maybe I saw that originally and then forgot about it. But I remember rejecting queen takes d6 because you have knight e4. <laughs> that's not good. Oh, that's a problem. You can't play that move. Probably you should play bishop e4. And then my queen is appropriately placed here. Oh, that's, that's embarrassing. 
That's embarrassing, man. I did not even realize your bishop was hanging. You should play this opening more often, though. See, it's not a bad line for black. Good, good sideline. Knight d5, knight c3, you're supposed to play. This is a very important move. I remember Magnus Carlsen crushing Grandelius with Grandelius playing something like knight c7. But now I don't see that game. That would definitely be in here. What did Grandelius play? Knight b6 or something? Maybe the game's not in here. Hmm. I thought it was some strange move. There was a game where Magnus Carlsen absolutely played like brilliantly with white against Grandelius like two years ago. It was a Nimzovich Sicilian. I thought black was out of his mind for playing the Nimzovich Sicilian against Grandelius. I mean, for playing the, Mag the, for playing the whatever against Carlsen. But I, I can't find the game now. I don't remember how it went. But Grandelius did something unusual. Like, he didn't play the main, main line. Anyway, you're supposed to play e6 here. Yeah, I can't remember how that game went now. But anyway. All right, back to the game. So we had um, Blitzen Rapid Chess on tap for today. Mr. Kit Kit Sitsas. Kitsa, Kit Kitcha. All right, Serbian's not my thing. I'll try to pretend, pretend it's Hungarian. Casual five plus three. Not even warmed up yet. We've got a strong player. Every Serbian opponent we have is like two thousand across the board. Didn't we have an investigation once with Bob? We found out that Serbia was like the strongest chess country, or something. I think. <clears throat> I played in Belgrade once. It's even worse than here. It's like everyone's a chess player. Everyone's good. You're not allowed to be Serbian, like, if you're under 1700, I think. Um, Spectacular Camel, good to see you. Wow, welcome. Morning. Spectacular Camel in the morning. You were 1600 years ago when we played? Really? Gone up to 2000 from 1600. That's impressive. I just sort, you know, I s sort of assume everyone from Serbia is like hatched at 2000 and, and no one can ever be. You had a different nickname? Really? Oh, yeah, I remember. Hmm. Yeah, I remember that. But I remember this account too. So it's not been that, that old. King B6. Somebody needs to clean the guinea pig's cage. We have pet guinea pigs, too, to be exact, and my eyes started to itch. I'm allergic to guinea pigs and and the hay that they eat. So it's a good combination. Good to have pets you're allergic to. When I was a little kid, we had cats. Mr. Coffee will be happy, but um, allergic to them, too. Not as, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Watery eyes. It's a good time. What about Jerry Stiller? Who's Jerry Stiller? Is he related to Ben Stiller? Wait, is that Ben Stiller's dad? Like the actor? That the old man from Seinfeld? Yeah, okay, I understand. Yeah, he was a famous character actor. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, is that... Am I thinking of the right person, though? Oh, 
Oh, he died. But is that who I'm thinking of? Right. He was up there. I mean, he, he wasn't young when he was in those shows, right? He must have been, like, in his 80s. What was his... He was Jerry's dad? Was that it? In the show, I mean? 92, natural causes? He didn't die of COVID? If I was like a, if I was a Hollywood actor, I would go to like private hospital, live in a bubble or something. What are we playing here? Fianchetto setup, subtle. Yeah, I never watched the other show. But Seinfeld is kind of fundamental. <clears throat> All right, so can I play B5? Especially with Bob around, we have to all remember Seinfeld. There was another reference to Seinfeld I ran into recently, but now I'm, it's spacing. I miss, I misplaced the memory what it, what it was I was thinking about. <clears throat> so. This bishop is a tricky thing in the Skavenigan type of structure. Bishop b7 is often good, but at the same time, it lends support over here defensively, which can be important. <clears throat> Rook b8 seems more conservative than playing bishop b7, though. I mean, I might be able to play b4, on the other hand, and take with a rook, maybe. Yeah, I'll take 92. I'm not planning on making it to 92. I'm a pessimist by nature, as you guys probably know. Um, <clears throat> it served me well to, to a point. There's, there's positives and negatives about being a pessimist. <laughs> oh, that's not even funny. All right. So, Rook AD1. Just focusing on fundamental play. White here. Don't touch your face. Man, I'm gonna sneeze on the stream. Can you cut this part out? It's very strange. I don't think I've ever sneezed on stream after hundreds of streams. It's almost impossible, though. The ragweed or something in the summer here is really brutal. And I have this some period in, in the summer in Budapest when I have uncontrollable sneezing, but... Usually I'm not here when it happens. I remember this one Grandmaster tournament I was playing in the summertime when I first came to Hungary and I li like literally couldn't be at the board. I had to stop, go out and like sneeze for five minutes at a time and come back. <clears throat> Mr. Coffee, what's up? My cat allergies are kicking in. 95 just giving him f4 with tempo it's the best i could come up with 
material. I'm a materialist. I feel dirty taking this pawn. Yielding an, an initiative to white on the other side of the board. Oof. Feels very, very cheesy and materialistic. That's the best I've got. It looks like he has initiative on the king side, but I've seen scarier attacks. I'm also threatening this for what it's worth. E5 is not that bad. Speaking of E5. Maybe knight d5, just to damage my pawn structure. Yeah, but then I can take and take on c2. Interesting. You have a golf partner who's 89. Wow. Well, this reminds me of, it reminds me of my real estate agent in the United States. The guy's like, gotta be 79, 80, and he's still working. He'll probably like be working at a hundred. All right, what are we gonna do? Take on C two and play B four. That makes sense. There is. Various, there are various tactics here. Is our, we're, check. <clears throat> check in 94. Chicken. Chicken tonight. He's got the initiative, but he's two pawns down. Bank deposit. Ultimately, I'm a little passively placed. That happens in the E6, sort of Sicilians. Now what? Queen B4. all about the the activity <clears throat> the OMG are you serious? Like knight c5, bishop d2 wins a piece? You're gonna bust that on me? I guess I should have left my queen there. He was 1600 last year, he says.
think you play too much bullet chess. I mean, White Wish is totally winning, but it's too obsessed with playing fast to stop and think about, you know, the winning move. So, learning to balance your time and, and playing quickly, you know, finding the key moment to actually spend time is, is kind of important. But I think here you're winning with Knight G5, right? No. Just completely winning with knight g5. This is a really hard position to defend right about now. He's two pawns down and he has massive, massive play. I don't know, that was not exactly my ideal first opponent when I wake up in the morning. Is someone who is relying on flagging me, playing super fast. You could have played rook takes c8. Yeah, you did. Okay, rook takes c8. This, this is winning now after this. Materially, you're not up any material. But the pieces are so well placed here. I don't know what I can do. pretty amazing so at this point I'm okay and then this is like I'm, I'm basically lost after knight d4 that's sort of unbelievable I mean you assume when you're two pawns up you know you ought to be able to give back some material to break his initiative but apparently I'm just completely lost after knight d4 I was thinking it would be just as bad after this sort of the same thing but surprisingly I have I have better defenses here so knight d4 is, is like a losing move for black. Yeah, I don't think 50 board simuls make a lot of sense. What's the point to like be cool or something? So, <clears throat> all right. I can't even play like 25 boards and play a quality game. So I only see the certain title players doing more than that to create a sensation of some sort, you know, so they look like they're some sort of God or something, but the quality of the games is really, really low. So, you know, that's why I don't play super fast time controls. Um, it seems like a waste of time. <clears throat> All right. This player's challenged me to rate it. I like to ch challenge just just casual. It's just a matter of wanting to have a lot of followers to act cool. Like people who are total beginners don't understand what a waste of time that is. Playing a hundred people in a five-five simul or something like. It's just meaningless but he's not even a title player I don't think um, really good blitz player of some sort so the Yamir another rated challenge I didn't put it at the bottom of the stream did I I didn't change my okay I need to update our text sorry guys I forgot so I'm taking five three three seven plus three challenges Usually I put this, excuse me, I usually put this um, text in there so people know what to challenge. 
getting a lot of like three zero five zero random challenges. has to be rated. It doesn't have to be rated. I don't want the games to be rated. It gives people incentive to cheat as well as the fact that I can't, you know, play full strength while I'm commentating on the games. So I don't do rated. Where did my Streamlabs go? Is it in there? Okay, it's working. But I will take subscriber challenges first. So if someone is a subscriber to my Twitch stream here, we're gonna take their challenges first. Doesn't look like there is. Luma Chess, I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't care if you're like 2,900. I'm not gonna play somebody unless they have 100 games. I don't care what people's ratings are. It doesn't make you like more important or something because you're higher rated. All right, Healthmaster, Riyadh, Mike Borst, the Amir. All right, dude, you're kind of being annoying. Healthmaster, five plus I wish the tournaments would follow uh, that system where it, it actually counted what, what, um, what is this? What are you doing? Normally Healthmaster plays real openings. Now he's playing the England Gambit. It's not like it's some written in stone it's like my arbitrary number <laughs> like I can make it what I want 50 75 100 whatever you know um, maybe today it'll be 65 games 50 doesn't seem like enough f6 sacrificing a pawn so Sorry guys, I have important message I have to send. It happened here. What is this? My windows aren't working. I guess it doesn't matter. I mean, knight f3 versus taking on f6. So it's basically a black redeemer with colors reversed. That's what you're playing. At least I know how to play the black side of the black Mardemer. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't know what to do here. Blobix, good to see you. Actually, I played this move. I don't like this that much. I just remembered. Well, hopefully the extra tempo will make a difference. 
No, I think if I had to prefer, I would go G3. Second thought. Maybe we still can. We can do... We can do both. Let's do both. Normally, it's funny because normally in any sort of setup where you fiend Keto, you would never play bishop g5. Because it would need these retreat squares, but we're just going to trade. So it probably doesn't matter that much. There is one concern. This is a great opening for one minute chess. <laughs> My favorite subject. Now I thought you could have tried bishop c5, threatening bishop takes f2 check. I don't know what I would do there. I mean, maybe something like knight c3, d4, knight a4 is, is a concept. It's actually playable. I mean, for that matter, if knight c3, d4, knight could go to e4, actually. So d4 may not be good at all. Yeah, knight c3 might be a good move in response to bishop c5. I'm not sure bishop g4 is bad, but it's probably not... not that connected to black's other moves here. I'm not sure d4 is a good move. Not contributing to black's development in any way. I mean, if you can play that move with tempo, it's probably more viable. Well, I guess I could play c3 or knight d2 here. <clears throat> kind of a tough call. I want to destroy his center, but c3 also opens up the bishop. I mean, I want to play c3. But it might help him to some degree. Ambulance. <clears throat> it's been a really noisy morning here because my house, someone woke me up this morning, like 8 o'clock. I think they're redoing the, the floor of their apartment or something. Almost every apartment in my building is under construction. There's got to be like at least 10. I'm very noise sensitive being a tournament chess player. If I was just a normal person who didn't play chess in live tournaments, it probably wouldn't bother me. But after thousands of, of chess tournaments where everyone's like, shh, quiet, you start to get accustomed to that condition, you know, where you're allowed to have, like, total silence to concentrate. I think it's making me crazy. A health master is an interesting player. Do you keep your rating down to 1362 on purpose, or how exactly can you be 1362 and play like this? You're probably 1862. But once in a while, he'll make some kind of insane move that just, like, gives you a piece. I mean, you play, like, 99% of your moves, like, you're 1862, but your rating is 1362. Seems kind of strange. You seem like you're... Like expert strength with 1300 rating. Here's a mistake to some degree. Probably still black's position is not that bad. He's he's giving me pawn odds, hanging with me on time, and now made like his first inaccuracy, immediately followed by maybe the best move.
I guess we'll have to take this pawn. He'll get one back though, along the V file. Let's hope not, DK guy. Now knight there. Mike Pre Pence's press secretary. Oh, you mean the girl? You mean Stephen Miller's wife? Is that who you're talking about? When you said he's not going to quarantine, I was surprised. I love the nepotism of the Trump White House. Everyone's girlfriend has, has a position of power. It's just so disgusting. I don't want to think about it anymore. I can't wait. I'm going to like, I, even if I have to like do it illegally, I'm going to like fly to the United States and vote. Well, actually I can vote from here. I'm probably better off voting from here. My vote might actually have more power. Although I think that either way, it doesn't matter e either from Massachusetts or as a American living abroad, everyone is going to vote against Trump. It doesn't really matter. My vote really doesn't have a lot of meaning. Either way, he's going to lose both those categories. That sort of sucks, you know? When you vote and your vote has, it's redundant. Because everybody from your state already is voting that way. It's like it's an incentive not to vote. Actually, a lot of people didn't vote in the last election from states like Massachusetts. Trump would have lost the, the popular election by a, a much larger margin if people like me, you know, felt like they really had to vote. If you live in Massachusetts, there's no point in voting in the presidential election. It's like predetermined result. A lot of states are like that. Interesting for Mr. Coffee, maybe. Acerbate, living in Nevada or living in Pennsylvania. Yeah, the vote might not come in time. <laughs> I don't think Orban has control over the U.S. Embassy. Um, one of the few places in Hungary he doesn't have control over. It's a scary thought, though. Health Master, an interesting 1300. It's getting more and more. This is why he's 1300. In any normal country, like hiring your girlfriend for a position of power would be like against the law. But not in the United States Trump administration. You can hire your children, your your girlfriend, whoever. It's just it's unbelievable. I thought there were actual laws to stop people from doing that. Apparently not. Anyway, positive thoughts. So Riyadh, Mike Borst, Sardine Man, and Yamir. So we got no subscriber challenges. You guys all have 100 games, I assume. Tunisia. My seventh grade geography teacher was always like, Tunis, Tunisia. I mean, 
I just thought like democratic countries had laws. My bad, you know. Yeah, I'm here. No, like a sub subscriber on Twitch. I understand you're like following me on Lee Chess. I remember when I was in college and I joined a fraternity. Everybody was always, you, you paid the membership to, to, to buy your friends or whatever. No, I just like paid for my social, to have a social life. No, it's, it's part of the social life here, Blobix. You're just paying your, your social life membership. It was like the best decision I ever made. I still have friends today from, from those guys. Bishop G4. I don't know how that really like connects with Black's whole position. We will occasionally see this. I don't mind if you want to give me your bishop. As I said in the last game, the bishop doesn't have retreat squares. I see a lot of people play like C6 and then they're trying to do some sort of tricks with Queen A5. That's a common, common line. Like, they're hoping that they can take this knight and then, like, swoop down and steal your bishop with a lateral queen capture. Another one of those, like, mystery variations that I've never seen in a book, but... It's, um, a chess archi opening archetype. <laughs> okay, I can take here and play... You got queen a5... You know, takes in queen a5 might actually be relevant. It's exactly what I'm talking about. 955. His rating puts health master to shame. He's already playing great to get this far. At 955, usually they've made some sort of inaccuracy. Pretty much never play anyone under a thousand. I don't even have a perspective of what that means. My first rating was 1275, and that's over the board rating. I feel like in those days, we had to walk uphill both ways to, to chess tournaments. Ratings were tougher, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, this is the point. So if I take here, he doesn't want an ending with d takes c5. He wants to play queen a5. And then if I, well, let's say take on d6, he has bishop takes f3, and exactly what I was talking about. Queen f3, queen g5, or something like that. It's funny because it's some line, like maybe I can take with the queen and take down here and even win his rook on a8. This isn't that bad for black. That's kind of scary. You're, you're transposing into something relatively normal. I don't know, Blavix, why do you want to know? Who is that? Do I want to know who it is? Should I know? You look at theory today, I got <laughs> politically correct. It's hard being in your 50s to be politically correct. 
So DK guy, early casting against the London. Couldn't cut with an answer to H4. Wait, what do you mean early castling against the London? Oh, yeah, they love to do stuff like that. You mean the real London or the stuff like Knight C3 style? The fake London or the real London? Like the Verisov where you're pretending you're playing the London and calling it the London even though it's not? Or you're talking about a traditional London with like Bishop F4, Knight F3, and then they try to do... I mean, it's not that appropriate. It's not that appropriate in those kind of positions. But I, I, I kind of lean toward not castling so early. What's, what are we thinking about? Are we doing a kingside fianchetto? I mean, I like to. I like to play around with with the the castling not too early, probably, just to avoid that. I, I had a strong player do that against me years ago. In the in the um what was it the Vienna Open in nineteen ninety six this guy Adolf Herzog, it's like an I M maybe you've heard of him, he's probably well he's probably older than you, but yeah he's got to be, he's probably like in his sixties, but um he's like a legit I M rated like twenty three, ninety or something, did that he just like went crazy and tried to castle. Queenside, or just play like a maniac totally with the London system with white and then like lost like an idiot and then I remember he was like all angry after the game like he had played some brilliant game and, and surprisingly blundered or something I mean I was under I was lower rated than him but I still remember how surprised or angry he was that he lost and I was like um, you played badly like the whole game that's why you lost Dude, what's this move? Queen b6. Oh my god. Wait. That can't work, right? The, the, the 900 just played queen b6. He just played queen b6. This is a 900 player. So if I play bishop g4, Knight g4, queen g4, he has queen takes b2, winning his material back. Are you serious? That's a 900 move? I mean, I don't know, but I, I don't know. Queen b6 seems to be playable. If I take twice, he gets queen b2 and wins the piece back. Since I played the double fianchetto against the London. What? I told him you played badly the whole game. He was angry. I'm a diplomat. Wait, I missed part of the, the story, Blavix. I missed the first part of your story. And now, now I, I can win a piece. So he was just lucky that he defended against losing this piece before he just didn't see it the whole time. My story? I forgot my own stories. I just embellish a little bit. Like everybody who tells a good story. <laughs> we do a little bit of embellishment of stories, believe it or not. I didn't really say it, I guess I just thought it. 48, I'm not 48. How old is, is Adolf Herzog? He's probably like 70, 70 something now. I never call it a mistake. It's a novelty. Well, the worst thing I can ever say to you is like, that's interesting. I caught myself doing it, you know, 
the polite way of telling people that they made a mistake, I'm, yeah, I'm diplomatic, is to tell them they made an interesting move. I realize at some point that I do it way too much. It becomes obvious, you know, when I say it's interesting, it means it's like, it sucks. Then, then you lose the use of the word interesting. It's not good. I mean, interesting is kind of an important word. It has a really legitimate place in chess analysis. You know, exclamation question mark is an actual like evaluation of a move. So it's important not to bastardize the word interesting. Um, thinking and not saying it is an even better reason why he was angry. He read my mind. Uh, he looked really, he was really pissed after the game. But I was thinking like, man, you played badly. What, what, what's your problem? I could understand, dude. I completely empathize if you're like winning and you blunder and you lose, you know? I cannot empathize with being pissed off. But if you played badly the whole game and you just lost because you played badly the whole game, I mean... You know, there's nothing to, there's nothing to be like suddenly angry about. The Magnus Online Tournament, well, you know, there are a handful of, of interesting games. That's what's worthy about it. Other than that, there's no chess going on. But in general, you know, the quality of play at that, at that speed is, is not great. It's not going to be... You're not going to produce any games for the ages, and I think Magnus is doing everything in his power to promote like ultra fast chess. But most of it is, you know, his promotion is out of his his media his media office. I mean, the New York Times can write an article saying how online chess is so popular and all that, you know. But at the end of the day, um, I'm I'm pessimistic. Mike Borst, Sardine, Eminem, Dr. Alan Akov. All right, we've got Stefanos, who's a subscriber. We're going to take that challenge first. I know. Thanks, Mr. Coffee. I think that there's a relationship between being a London system player and being on the far right. Maybe not. The far, maybe the far left or far right. They have to be like extremists one way or the other. Didn't I play a couple of Nimzos with white recently? Everything has to be discussed in terms of political right and left. It's ridiculous. Even now, we're, we're making jokes about it. <laughs> it's so stupid. That's why my native country is so effed up. The whole world. What is it with the tribalism? Why is tribalism so important? What is with that, you know? I guess I need to talk to a sociologist or something. No, I'm not gonna play the Vienna variation, man. I'll just play a bad Queen's Gambit accepted. Doctors can never be violent. We know that. It's a fact. Probably they are slightly less violent than than the average. But you know the majority of like people I know that went to medical school didn't go to like medical school to make the world a better place, you know, Blobix. They become, they become <laughs> plastic surgeons so that they, they can enhance the breasts of the world. They're certain to be nonviolent.
they're in it for the for the social well-being of of the world not to not to take anything away from doctors in this time of health crisis but i honestly don't think they're less violent than than average people I would imagine. Just a thought. The London system, though, has been sort of bastardized. I mean, it seemed like a passive opening. And you've got people like Simon Williams trying to rebrand it as this, like, attacking system, attacking with the London system. We'll make Mr. Coffee and I can make a video series, like, attacking with the Kali. It'd be funny to, like, pick the most passive opening you can think of and make like a satirical video series on YouTube ripping their ripping their face off with the Kali system smashing with the with the Slav essentially the London system is like one of the most boring and unambitious openings there is to try to rebrand it as something exhilarating and aggressive is sort of ridiculous the reiti for the attacking player i had that feeling all the time my last reiti against bianca in february i like after 13 moves offered a draw i was like i'm not going to do this anymore you know this is just like ridiculous The Rady is really passive, essentially. I mean, I know some aggressive players who played like things like the Rady. I mean, the only advantage is that you kind of hang back at first. And, and the hypermodernism maybe lets you keep some pieces on the board or something like that. But essentially, it's, it is a, a basically kind of passive opening compared to others. Yeah, the nurses are, are the vital thing, right? That's why Germany did pretty well, at least in the early stages of the pandemic. Dude, when I went to the hospital when my mom was sick, I mean, for like a year, I almost never saw doctors. When my mom was in rehabilitation, there was a rehabilitation center and they were supposed to have a doctor like there. You never saw him. I mean, Yeah, it's the nurses that do everything. It's like a law firm, like the paralegal leaguers. The paralegals do all the work and the lawyers just collect the money. It's it's all right for like um you know, surgeons or something. They obviously have to do what they have to do. It feels like the consultant doctors just never around. I don't know about this move. No, I mean, like, if you go to, like, a rehabilitation center or, like, a senior living center where doctors are supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to have, like, hours every every day or, or a couple times a week, and you can't even, I mean, I, I like my mom was in a rehabilitation center for like two months and I don't think I saw a doctor more than once. I mean, saw a doctor in the building, you know, let alone like talk to one. I never talked to a doctor. I like, I think I saw one once down the hall after visiting like 60 times. And they're charging a lot of money. What am I doing here? All right, anyway, getting carried away talking about random stuff. How about D5? D5, pawn takes, bishop takes. It's like a queen's gambit idea. How are things in France, Blubbix? In the news, it said, like, people are now free 
to some degree, and maybe they'll even start having people go back to school. But it won't be mandatory. You know, people whose like kids are home and they, they need to work, they can send their kids back to school maybe, reduce size classrooms and stuff in France. It's going to be difficult to implement, but in Hungary, I don't think we're going to have school at all. It's interesting. I don't think there'll be any school till the fall. France actually attempting to pull that off to some degree. You guys are always distracting me. I should be focusing on talking about chess here. Welcome to my stream, guys. Please support the stream. We can use your donations to further our political dialogue. Just kidding. We need your support to keep it going, though. Interesting simul yesterday. I haven't talked about the simul. A couple people drop out early, but some, some decent games. Blobix, you didn't play yesterday, did you? What did you say? Doctors are not concerned by the pandemic. Leave the hospital and run to the French. <laughs> All right. D5. D5, knight, A5. Usual trick. D5, knight, A5. Bishop, A2. Knight takes D5. Leaves me feeling empty. Do you, have a, do you have a bear trap or anything like that? Do you have bears? We like to watch the nature cam on lockdown. The Romanian, Romanian bear cam. Popular pastime here at my house. <clears throat> Transylvanian bear cam. Do you have like a... <laughs> Can you get like a wolf cam on Alexa or something? How was it yesterday? It was pretty good. I got tired toward the end. I started losing some games. Much more sane. Having only one ringer in the simul, Antonio. I managed to get a draw against someone on sound. I sort of had to beg for it. This is a little bit like playing with someone else. Who else was it? Was it Blobix? No. Oh, no, I know who it was. It wasn't Blobix. It was against um, Mule Skinner, where I had to do the strategy where I would intentionally not trade anything. Usually I'm the one trying to trade stuff. It was working well against Mule Skinner, though. With the IQP... Not you, Blobix. It's weird not having Bob here. Spice up the chat. Masturbate's quiet. Yeah, well, someone on sound got me he wouldn't trade queens. I was trying to get him to trade queens into a, a pawn up rooking game where I was fine. He was a pawn up, but the rooking game would have been totally okay for me. But he was very smart. He was avoiding any sort of exchanges. This is another case, interesting case, where maybe I should avoid exchanges again. <clears throat> but um, 
Bishop e7. The um, the funny part was that someone on sound, who reminds me of Mule Skinner stylistically, even though they play different openings, they're around the same strength. I think the funny part about someone on sound was like right before the sound, he was bragging about how he was studying endgames. He was bragging about how he was studying Sharashevsky and game strategy. But like when it came time to trade queens, you know, it was like, he could just trade queens into what was probably a drawn end game. Even though he was a pawn up, I had enough compensation to hold, but I probably wasn't winning. But he wouldn't trade queens. It was like trying to get him to cut off his arm or something. He was playing for a win, even with his king in the middle of the board, at great risk to himself because he didn't want to trade queens and go into an ending. Bishop f6. So, trying to transfer to the king side with, with g6 and bishop g7. Classic. But I have this. If you're not careful, this is going to be a little bit like that game I had the first game against um, Kitsa where I was like two pawns up, but getting crushed by the perfectly placed pieces. It's a little bit like that. I'm not two pawns down, but my structure is pretty shredded. We don't care about little things like that around here. Weak pawns. Weak pawns, no meaning. We're playing all out for the win. It's important fundamental strategy though. If you have an IQP, isolated queen pawn, you know, you want to try to keep the pieces on the board clearly. Yeah, he can't, I mean, he can't risk 97 here. There he goes, trading. He's a trader. He got one exchange in. This is looking kind of creepy for black, though. Keeps his queen on this. And I've got nothing clear. Knight f6, queen f6? Would be recommended. See, he needs that knight f6, queen f6 move. For example, queen h5, g6. What do I have here? A rook lift? Somewhere? Queen lift. We have queen lift. Obviously, has to play h6. <clears throat> That's probably not going to solve all of his problems. Take care, Antonio. Tomorrow. You better be here tomorrow. So black's still holding on. Queen e7. This is what it's like to play against Miralis and someone on sound, Stefanos to be constantly harassed by dynamic gambit like dynamic play not my usual motif but he's still hanging tough after queen e7 nobody trying to flag me stefanos uses his time Appreciate that. Okay, so Sardine Man, Abiep, if you can re challenge me to 5 plus 3, if you're listening. Guys, let's get some more challenges. We have another hour left. 13 versus 19. 
What? 13 versus 900 versus 2,000. Yeah, the 1,300. The mysterious 1,300 who plays like an 1,800. Where did we leave book here? I mean, I willingly played a variation that's nothing for white. This is unusual, come to think of it. He basically just lost a tempo. He just, just blundered a tempo. That's serious. Renzo Matavani. I always thought that was a cool name. Probably someone that Blobix knows. The Blobix generation. But um, those those Western European masters. Bishop d6, no good. Yes, I played Renzo in, in Montpellier in 1989. How did you know? Western Europe. I live in Budapest. This is the far east. I live in the wild east, Bobix. You, you're in civilized, civilized world. My blitz becomes so high. Nowhere near my record. I think I have 25. I probably went as, was 26 and something in blitz. I don't know. I could easily be 26. I need to repair my rapid rating. That <laughs> It's like 2330. I was so pissed yesterday. I didn't really have time to talk about it on the stream because of the simul. But I mean, I almost never have time to play a game off stream, a rated, like say rapid game. I almost never have time. And so I had a free hour yesterday afternoon and I was like, all right, I'm going to play like a rapid game. We'll play a rated rapid game and try to gain a few points back. I had, I had lost a lot of points due to a disconnection and another, but it'd been low. I had lost to some cheaters and never got refunded points. So my rating in rapid is like the lowest it's been in two years, maybe ever. And uh, I wanted to build it back up. I, I'll play a rapid game or two. So I go to play a rapid game and I get paired with a 1900 or something. Four moves into the game, I think it was like 2000. Four moves into the game, Lee Chess crashes. And it was my move. So as the administrators put it in the forum post, they said, your rating points were sacrificed to the gods. You know, this isn't acceptable. I'm sorry, you know. Um, it's all funny, but it's very funny, but it's not acceptable. I mean, at this stage, they need to take it a little more seriously. I and mean, when the site crashes, you know, nobody should unfairly lose their rating points. You know, something needs to be done other than making stupid joking statements to people. That's just not fair. Um, you know, I don't care that much about my, about my ratings, but like a little bit, you know, at least the site should have some sort of system that actually works. You stayed in Budapest a dozen times, a dozen times in the 90s. That's when I first came, 96. So we've got a mainline Kali for the attacking player. A la Mr. Coffee. No, I like this Kali Kalnowski, it's all right. I understand it's, it's, um, its limitations though. How about this pawn? No, I don't play bullet chess. Don't see the point. I play bad enough already. <laughs> I play bad enough already in, in Blitz. What's the point of playing worse? Don't really understand. I don't think that Magnus Carlsen is doing much for chess, you know, by promoting bullet. 
he's too young. He's getting older now, but I mean, he still seems like a little kid to me. He's teaching a lot of people like to play bullet chess is, is good. It's actually sort of stupid. He didn't become a great player by playing bullet chess. He did, you know, have like excellent training from professional coaches and stuff. But I think it's too much promotion of ultra fast chess. But that's my usual spiel. Take it or leave it, whatever. He's in a position to promote chess now. He's put himself in a position to promote chess. But all he does is promote fast paced chess. I guess there's no choice. At least it's rapid in blitz. He didn't have like a world-class bullet tournament. Um, but I don't know what's gonna happen to real chess. It's a good question. What's gonna happen to real chess? Are we ever gonna go back to having normal tournaments and stuff? Touching the pieces. If I touch the pieces, are you going to be able to touch the pieces? Like, okay, like it's overrated whole, the whole thing about like wearing gloves. I mean, the point is like you, you just can't touch your face. But still like, I don't think that chess tournaments can resume as long as there's any sort of significant level of infections around the world. Mr. Coffee, it's like absurd that they didn't. How can they not cancel the World Open? The US Open got canceled and that's in August. I mean, it should have been, that decision should have been made like long ago. I realized that Continental Chess is like a private entity. It's not the US Chess Federation. But I mean, it wouldn't take a brain surgeon to do that, you know? It's gonna be a huge money loser <laughs> if they don't cancel it. I'll tell you that right now. That's, that's to, you know, automatic. Chess terms are gonna be money losers, for sure. They never were big money makers. That might be one of the few. Right, Las Vegas Open, you mean the National Open? Um, National Open would have been coming up, right? I mean, even after it's allowed to have tournaments again, a lot of people are gonna be very skeptical about doing so. So I think there's gonna be a pretty large, long period where even when tournaments are happening, people are still not gonna register and go. So chess terms are going to be losing money for quite a while, basically. But I don't know if you want to, if you're a chess tournament organizer, you want to just accept that you're going to lose some money for a while to get it back off the ground, you know? Maybe that's the thing to do. It's an interesting game here. What happens if bishop f5, knight f5, knight c3, queen d8, knight e2 check, king h1. That sort of seems like a stupid variation. What am I doing here? Online chess tournaments will be prominent. Alan J, like, you can't have real online chess tournaments. I mean, already in my Facebook, like, they had some sort of British Blitz Championship, and there's every kind of scandal from all the good players that I know. 
you know, if you involve prizes with online chess tournaments, disaster ensues. And that's been the case and will continue to be the case for the rest of, of time. You can have online tournaments, there just can't be prizes. <laughs> that's the only problem. Um, once you introduce prizes, then cheating becomes rampant. So, if you consider it a tournament, if there's no prizes, I guess you can. You can have said tournaments, but... Um, thank God he traded queens there. I don't think he should. Wait, it's a pretty solid 1600. 1628. Is this another one of your accounts, Health Master? Too st no, it's too, it's too sterile to be health master. Sterile. British Blitz Championship not going over too well. <laughs> um, you know, I would love to have online chess tournaments. It just can't happen. Magnus Carlsen can organize this eight player, you know, thing where they're monitored or something, you know. But 3 0 doesn't control cheating. I mean, even 20 years ago, people cheated in 3 0. Even 1 0 can't mitigate cheating against really good cheaters. Maybe 20 years ago, it, it, it would have been possible. Yeah. It's hopeless. You need a, you know, you need an arbiter at every player's location. Even then it would be possible to cheat if you did it in a sophisticated way. Money can't be involved, you know. Forget about it. I mean, I have people cheating against me just for the sake of ego. I've told a story a million times how I played for a site called the World Chess Network. And even like one grandmaster openly, repeatedly, not openly, but I mean, we all knew he was cheating. After a while, he had such a, a ridiculous score, it was like unconceivable that he wasn't cheating. And that, that was just for his ego, you know, so that he could look good, <laughs> not even for any money. And that's a grandmaster. Numerous Grandmasters have been... Is, there's no way it's going to work. They can try all they want. I know the people are, but it's like... Ill-advised. Ugly scenarios. When you ban people for cheating, then they sue you. Good luck, like, owning a chess server or something, unless you have a really good lawyer. This is 1600. Supreme defense here. Now I got him there. I had him there with rook a2. I don't know if I'm letting him off the hook here. It should be a draw, but it's not that easy. I, mean, I have the bishop pair. I can open one file. Um, 
This is, in this case, the H file. But I mean, the problem with online chess tournaments is like, you know, again, like you have lawsuits and people who are suing you. If you, you try to run an online chess tournament, then you're going to be like accusing people of, of being computers. Then they're going to get a lawyer and sue you for saying that they're a computer. Where's your proof? Now you have to go to court, like prove it or, you know, it's just, it's just a disaster. You know, the whole thing, it's going to be very, you know, arbitrary. If you can prove people are really computers, there's all sorts of angles and problems. All right. So Alan Akov, Abyep and Yamir, we're going to play these three games. Do you guys have a hundred games? I like to ask that of my opponents. I mean, I've seen this stuff happen in the past. This is not a new concept. Other chess sites in the last 20 years have had online tournaments and these sort of things have happened. It's, it's, it's not new, you know, I don't think there'll ever be real online chess tournaments as much as people want it to happen. It's just not feasible. Um, all right, I'm done playing the Reiti. <laughs> I retire from playing the Reiti. Unless it's, yeah, it's like, it's like, a, did I ever, what do you think it was Fisher who played Nigel Short? Fisher thinks, I mean, Nigel Short thinks every, every, everyone who beats him is like Bobby Fisher, probably. I don't know. I heard like once like Gasser was, was toying with him or something. I don't know. Short has like a massive ego, so probably somebody like trolled him amongst the top players in the world and and then it had to be Bobby Fischer because it's the only way like Short could accept it or something. But it's it's possible he really played Bobby Fischer, but who knows? How could you possibly know? I wouldn't even be able to hazard a guess. 50-50. Oh. He's an extremely egotistical guy. And if, if you say it was Bobby Fischer who beat me, you know, it, it makes it okay. You know, then when you feel like, oh, it's okay. I lost to Bobby Fischer. That's not so bad. Whoever was beating on him was like trolling him by playing all sorts of like ridiculous openings and stuff. Okay, queen a4 check, knight c6. What happens if you play g takes f there, Dr. Alenikov? Is that better? Or maybe bishop takes c3 check? Winning a piece. No, I don't know, you know, but I'm sure there's a few people it could have been if it wasn't a computer. How can you be sure it wasn't a computer? I mean, I guess he would be able to tell, but if you put a computer against short back in 2000, I mean, first of all, they were, they were trolling him, right? So they're playing like the the bomb cloud and stuff like that. That gets inside your head. I mean, I'm not sure that Nigel Short was able to concentrate when the other player was playing like, you know, E4, King E2. Your level of play is gonna go down. It's gonna affect you, you know. He's not gonna play as well. I mean, that's why I used to play the St. George defense. When you play the St. George defense against people, they feel insulted, like, and then they, they like are angry that you dare to play a dubious opening against them and they start to play worse. Um, I have an almost perfect score. I lost once, but I have like four and one with the St. George defense against masters. Because I think most people take it really as an insult. So I don't know about that, that situation. I never really saw the games though. I just remember the story. So knight takes c6 here, knight e3, knight d8, knight d1, rook d1, king d8 is, is slightly okay for white. 
isn't it? Knight e3, knight d8, knight d1, rook d1, king d8. And then like e5, white is fine. So I have to take on c6. Nobody really plays this with white. Knight takes c6 um, is not the move. You're supposed to play bishop b5 or bishop g5. Bishop d2. You know, I think I faced this once in a blitz game and looked it up afterwards. It's not, not that simple. Queen b6, queen f3. Queen b2, rook b1, queen a3. Yeah, something like that. I don't think there's anything else. Well, I don't know, man. I mean, the computers were pretty strong in 2000. I had no chance. You know, a GM still losing the vast majority of their games against computers back in 2000. A lot of people used to play them all the time. I remember like Nick DeFermian would play engines nonstop in that time and he would lose like 80% of his games in Blitz, maybe even more. Nigel Short is stronger, so you know, he'd probably lose like 60%, you know. Um, Queen e2 instead of queen f3. That's probably a better move. Then queen f3, because the queen f3 tends to get attacked. Although here you do an interfere with your bishop. Is my queen getting trapped? No, not directly. Now f3. What does that mean? F3. Knight e5 is just likely to get attacked again. So, unless I really want my knight on d7. We have a choice though. Knight, knight, knight e5, f4, knight e7. Knight f6 directly seems more natural. It's a poison pawn. Sicilian. Rook b3, queen c5. Now white has the very strange move, knight a4, but I have this. No. White is going on this really extravagant. Bishop b6 allows rook b7. g4 is probably a reasonable move. So how do I develop my king side? My rating is not accurate. Okay, well that's good to know. Why is your rating not accurate? My reading is pretty accurate. I've played a lot of games. I mean, I guess 2,500 something. I would be stronger if I was in form. I was much stronger in Blitz. I might be stronger in Blitz and, and Rapid than in regular. I think I'm definitely stronger in Rapid. Pretty uncompromising play here by white.
psychotically aggressive, I would call it. Now it's risky to try to win a pawn. I mean, greedy is a better word. I have bishop a6. I was looking at knight hg4. But it's hard to alter your style. You know, some people actually, like myself, are able to alter our styles, depending on how strong the opponent is. I'm going to play more aggressively against certain players. I think White has played insanely aggressive chess right from the beginning, all or nothing. Not my favorite style of play. I mean, it requires you to be able to calculate almost perfectly to try to play in this style. I mean, I'm not a computer. I can't attempt to play like a computer. So I try to keep it a little bit closer to the vest. <sighs> Maybe knight g4 now, just keeping it simple. Structurally white is destroyed. And down the exchange. Now what do I have? Force a trade of queens. I can try to force a trade of queens. If I force a trade of queens, it's going to be pretty hard for black to not win this end game. That's yeah, made in H2. Yeah, I mean, it's like this type of style that you're playing is, is probably working really well against weaker players, but you know, it's a very sharp position and you have to play like perfectly. A computer would kill me in this type of open Sicilian, for example. But this is a theoretical mistake. Knight takes C6. It's been played not really good for white, though. I'm curious about my follow-up. So you see, like, the engine claims it's still okay for white. There's a handful of games here. Bishop c1 being the best move. So Tibor Lewitsky, this is a Hungarian club player. I think I remember him. The engine actually prefers... See, the engine actually prefers knight f6 here. Queen b6, this, like, this actually happened, like Hungarian team championship or something, 2002. I had a blitz game like this once before. Queen e2, queen b2, rook b1, queen a3. And now you played f3, which is probably like, you know, forcing a knight. It's not hurting you, really. You probably don't need to chase it away. But the engine preferred knight e5 massively. It's coming down to reality now. So it's an inter interesting line. I had this once before, twice before in Blitz. Um, oh, you really wanted to play f4. Okay. Well, anyway, a kind of unknown variation there. But I faced it. Yamir, Chupa, God of Snooker, Merville, and Maxime. And Abby up again. I've got like till 1.30, so I can I can play for another 45 minutes. We can play a couple of games. Mike wanted to play before and he got booted. Let's take his challenge. He's got about 100 games. If you guys subscribe, I'll take you out to lunch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, subscribers play first. Guys, please support the stream if you can. If you can afford it, donate. 
some bits or make a donation to the stream. Monday's slow. Monday's slow. We, where's our, where's our, um, actually, something weird about my, my stream. Where's my bits donations? They're not there anymore. I don't see bits donations anymore. What's going on? Something changed in the... Can I still take bits donations? What happened to my Twitch? Why don't I see bit donations anymore? Prime loot, notifications, whispers. Something happened with Twitch. I got demonetized. I don't think so. How would I get demonetized? That would be bad. You would get a, you would get a notification. I would think. Twitch has a, lot, <laughs> Twitch has a lot of things to do. My last bits. No, I mean I think it's something with the with the display probably. They're always tinkering with with the. Uh, the stream like look and stuff. I mean with with the twitch look Normally it shows me at the top Alexander horse just donated his last bits What does it say? Seems good 100 <laughs> Just to see if I've been demonetized, but um, but you know, it's very bad because I think it encourages people Something with my with my channel Something in the display. But it just happened this morning. Maybe I have to click some kind of option or something to read. Reset it. It's totally new. Subs and gifts are there on other channels. That's refreshing. Mike Boris is 1400. Wait, where did my time go? I'm getting this a lot. Knight takes C6. Mr. Coffee, you have any clue? Can you look into that for us? You're busy with work. God damn it. Did Bob hack my account? I like how that's your first suspicion. Scary. Um, just not there anymore. I'll have to check it after the stream. As a partner affiliate, you can access your leaderboard settings by handing over to your dashboard. Click the hamburger icon on the top left hand corner. The hamburger icon? Is this something new? I probably got reset. It got reset or something. You know, there was this message for a long time about changing the look of your dashboard or something. I don't remember a hamburger icon. But we're not going to do it while I'm trying to figure out how to play this position. Maybe after the stream. But it's good to see the, the bit donations and gift subs because it encourages other people, I think. Harry Shiba, thanks. Um, I don't know if that's going to work, but we'll try. That was not like that yesterday. What do you mean you don't see anything different, Mr. Coffee? I don't follow you. In reference to what? This is, is this a good move? Maybe the streamer view changed. 
try mod view. You can do like try mod view, mod view, chat settings. Nothing there under chat settings. Switch to non-mod settings. That doesn't do anything. No, I don't understand. <laughs> Did I pay my taxes? They're on the way, it's on the way. I'm, I'm filing my taxes. One of the only thing, the only good things about the pandemic, Blobix, is that the filing date for U.S. taxpayers was extended to July fifteenth. So that can't be the reason. It's really solid here. Um, must be able to see what you see to figure out what's going on. All good with the top bar? You have the top bar? No problem at all? You actually see the... You're the gifter leader. You just gifted a sub. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> no problem at all as the gifter. I can't see my, my, my bar, the top bar. It's just like disappeared. That's my whole problem. So somehow in my view, thank you for the gift, uh, for the gift, by the way, my view has it totally gone. Blobix doesn't have the bar. No problem at all, it does. So that's interesting. So it seems to depend on who we are, whether we have the bar or not. No, it's okay. I don't need any time. He's a solid 1400. This is totally a draw. Although it's possible to lose for either side, the position is equal. Give me more, more, no, don't give me more time. <laughs> Make more bit donations. We're fine, we've got increment. I'm not gonna lose on time. It pisses me off when people give me extra time actually. I don't like it. Just concentrate. Blavix just donated 500 bits. Not that I can see the totals. Well, as long as you guys can see the top bar, that's the important thing. It's not there for me. Um, I mean, it's, I'm curious to know, but I would rather it be visible to the viewers. Not so important for me. Incredibly well played ending. So so B4 dangerous. You see a snorkel. I got the snorkel. Well that's Streamlabs. Streamlabs is cool. They just take my money when people make credit card donations and keep it. <laughs> Other than that, it's cool. 
B5. This is getting scarier progressively. You refresh and the bar is back. I could try that. I think I tried that already though. It didn't work. Something different for me. I got 41 viewers, but no, no, no gift sub bits bar. I don't know how it depends. Maybe it's something with Firefox. Mike is finally drifting. His pawns are too, too far separated. Buddy system. I wonder if it has to do with your browser, what browser you're using. What browser do you use, Mr. Coffee? But thanks, oh, now it's there, but now it's back again. All right, so I didn't get demonetized. <laughs> That's all I need now. I don't understand why my Twitch stream seems really slow to load and it's always been like that. Is everyone like that? I've got knight c5, I'm gonna win the ending. I think Mike was, was totally fine until he pushed a little too much here on the queen side. The bishop on f3 was never great. You don't really want that to be like that. But it's it's interesting how he could get, you know, pretty far 20 moves into a drawn position against the title player. That's impressive. You know, I didn't play great, but I played pretty normal moves. You should hold this ending. My computer seems to be slow during simuls. Is it an old one? Well, it's not that powerful, you know. It's just like a small notebook. I should buy myself a decent computer someday. One day. When I win the lotto. I have to give all my, I always have to like give my computers to my family and they inherit my old ones, to my children, the wife. But just keep getting new ones. But I haven't been happy. I'm not super happy with this Lenovo. The keyboard just sucks. I already have keyboard problems. I've only had it for a year. I mean, it's not a powerful computer. What's my opinion on Jan Gustafsson? Should I have an opinion? I didn't know. He seems like a diligent analyst, is my opinion of, John, of Jan Gustafsson. I don't know about him personally. I never met him. But I like his analysis. I like his um his opening analysis. Seems good. Very professional. I mean as a chess player as a chess player, he seems very professional. I'm impressed, you know. A lot of grandmasters I'm not impressed by, and I've met a lot of them. I mean, you know, I have like extensive chess career, and I've, I've won maybe like, not to brag, but I've played I don't know how many games against GMs, like tons. 
and I probably won like over 50 games against Grandmasters in tournament games. Believe me, there, there are different levels. It's not like one size fits all with GMs. This position is starting to piss me off, Mike. I should be making progress here. Tough 1400. All right, that's, that's the end of the road. Very old song. You can't trade into a king and pawn endgame, down two pawns. But it was a it was a solid game, just for the rating difference. I don't compliment every grandmaster. I don't automatically have respect. A lot of GMs are relatively weak, or I'm not that I'm not that much worse, you know, as a player. But he seems really good. I'm legitimately impressed. All right, no rematches. Let's. Yamir Chupa. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I understand about not playing for a decade. I basically stopped playing in 2008. And I'm doing other stuff ever since, not directly related to playing chess, poker, teaching chess. Um, working on chess videos. I basically gave up playing serious tournament chess. It's been more than 10 years. I still play like in the Hungarian team championship, occasional tournaments, but not, not enough. So that's, he has to make a living. He's 2,600. It's impressive. I'm not an authority on Sreshnikov. Yeah, of course. He's still playing. Yeah. More than me. He's not like completely retired. But he's been able to make a living with, you know, media stuff. And, um,. A lot of grandmasters can't do that, you know? So they just play. It's very hard to make a living as a grandmaster if you're just playing in tournaments. In fact, like a lot of them have a very, very low level of income. Especially like from somewhere like where I live, like in Central Eastern Europe. If you take like a GM from Hungary or Serbia and they're not doing anything with like teaching, it's really hard to make a living, you know? Well, I think I could have become a GM if I had really stuck with it at the at the at the key moment. You know, I basically hesitated and started playing poker like full time. But I'm not gonna just cry about it. Like, oh, I should have done this instead. You know, I completely like put chess aside entirely for almost ten years. I mean, I still played sometimes in in the hungarian team championship but almost nothing outside of that i mean i know grandmasters who i don't believe are stronger than me you know objectively not to name names but i also had a lot of personal problems like everybody it's easy if you have a smooth life. <laughs> Race, Jen and Yasser barely remember the EP. I don't know what an EP is. En passant rule, the EP. You French invented it. I mean, it's second nature to you. Yasser is a beast.
Not to diss Maurice, but objectively, he's not much stronger than me. We were equal at my peak, I would say, to be fair. Um, this is an example of I could have been a grandmaster. Easy to say that or whatever, you know. Should have been, could have been. I'm a wannabe grandmaster. Did I have knight f6 check there? See, that's why I'm not a GM. Maurice would have seen that. He's good tactically. We have very different styles. Totally different. Blobix knows that. I'm self-taught. <laughs> I remember playing Maurice the first time I played him in Washington, D.C. It was like 1992. He was... He was... Uh, I don't remember if he was an IM or not, maybe. But I remember the game because he, he sacked a piece with like knight d5 against me in a Velomirovich Sicilian. And he was better, but he couldn't win. He's a little bit older. Cormoran, welcome. Was there 96? Of course. I got a little distracted. It's, it's martini time. <laughs> For me, what am I doing here? I had better moves, much better than this. Started t telling stories and stuff. My Maurice. Ouch. I have the most uncomfortable chair. All right, yes. All this trouble for nothing on the king side, I really didn't get much. I should have been winning this already. So Cormoran, of course. I forgot that his rook was trapped, of course. That's why I don't <laughs> I don't want to play rated games because I'm too busy chatting and stuff half the time. Now Black has good chances to even hold this. He's not even down any material. Um, my knight on g6 looks nice, but it's it's almost like not centralized. Decentralized would be the word. I can't believe I screwed this up. Yep. I'm I'm thinking there's more than one win though. How did you defend after Queen E4? Oh E5, and I, I forgot about Knight E6. Okay. So I just got totally distracted. Anyway. Now how do I win? Maybe something crazy with like Queen H4, G4, G5? Lemon. Guys, we have time for like two more games. Right, Mike, I already played. Abiyap, I already played. So these two games will be the last ones for today. I can play Chupa if he's got 100 games. We played before. And, and Haberbaum. Oh, well, what happened to you? You know? I can't help it if you're if you like disconnected from Lee Chess. Um Merville. 
I thought you just left. I mean, I don't have control over that. I guess you're there. It's weird. It just appeared. Well, we'll take, like, two games, whatever. Who's ever first? But I can't control it if you get disconnected or something. Leech Us generally keeps you in, in the order if, if you come back within a, a certain reasonable amount of time. Another complaint of mine about Leech Us is, is the whole... I love Leech Us, but the whole thing about, like, you know, you get disconnected, like, for one minute and you get forfeited. I mean, I think that's pretty harsh. Like I said with Mr. Coffee a couple weeks ago, there should be a system in place where you have like credit, you know what I mean? Like if you don't disconnect on a regular basis, you shouldn't automatically lose a 10 minute rapid game because you've been disconnected for like 45 seconds or something. That's, um, or blitz, you know, game shouldn't be automatically forfeited. They need to have a more sophisticated way of dealing with that, I think, that's more fair. I understand that people are going to abuse it and, and, like, troll you by, like, letting your clock run out and stuff. But, I mean, we need to have a little bit of forgiveness for when you, you get momentarily disconnected. To do it based on your history, yeah, there's got to be some kind of compromise. I mean, it's ridiculous that I get disconnected. My internet, everybody's internet goes out, you know, sometimes for maybe 30 seconds. You shouldn't automatically lose a five minute game because your internet goes out for 30 seconds. There's got to be a better way to do it. So I've got G5. We're going to go for it. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> it doesn't look safe. But it was ridiculous. I could have won a rook. I could have won the exchange. I stopped taking my opponent seriously. I thought, okay, he's just playing bad. Just playing badly, but um, I missed two opportunities to win the exchange, and now black has a lot of chances. When I was chatting, overconfident, we've never played before. How about B4 as a decoy? My attack is sort of non-existent. The decoy. <laughs> it's a new... A new Clint Eastwood movie. But, um... Finally watched The Joker last night. Knight takes b4. Do I have something here? It's unconvincing. I'm all over the place, just talking about whatever totally random thing that pops in my head. I thought you said I wish I was <laughs> was a too sharp programmer. That's funny. All right. I need glasses. I try to deny it. We do have something here, maybe rook c1. Yeah, dropping that pawn with check, that's a good idea. Damn. The well, rook c7 is the only move. Black has knight d3 coming, which is gonna be an issue. Maybe king h1. <laughs> yeah, also has knight d5, yeah, this is strong.
this was like a tournament game, I would be ripping my eyes out now. Pulling my hair out and wanting to kill myself because I lost the winning position. It's pretty incredible. This, this is just overwhelming, crushing, ridiculous. Like, I think even Knight F6 check probably wins by force. Maybe not, but it's real close. Like, I can get that in, and transfer a rook up here. And now I'm, like, losing. That's weird. Looks like I'm just going to lose. Down a pawn. My knight just sat on g6, like... Irrelevant. It's ridiculous. There's nothing I can do. I'm just totally lost. I feel it, you know. It looks like white has something, but he doesn't. Hopeless. Based on the way that Black has played this game, I don't think I have a chance here. Trending. Blame it on the French internet, Blobix. I can always win by cheapo. So this is where I spent so much time. Somehow I have a saving move here. I thought forever on queen b2 and queen h4. <laughs> Somehow queen h4 saves the game. There's no way I could possibly figure that out. I mean, I guess the key is to keep on this pawn. I thought I was just lost, frankly, either way. A 
of course, I mean, White played the beginner in the beginning like a beginner, and then he played like a master at the end. I guess he doesn't take the opening too seriously. I knew I was taking a lot of risk here by playing g5, but what else can I do? I was actually winning at some point with queen h3. How does that win? What does this even do? I don't understand what this even does. Queen h3, defending my pawn. Why am I winning in this position? There's some very sophisticated threats with f6 and queen f5. Too much for me to, to see in time pressure. Now nah, it's hard to play tactically without enough time. I knew I was taking a risk here. B4 was actually a good move. And then that, that cheapo was where I lost it. So king h1. Very sharp position. <laughs> but at the end, he was merciless. Now, after this, knight d5, my last chance, queen h4. And now I'm just lost. Knight e3, knight f5. E3, threatening queen d5. There's no moves. Queen e5, trading queens. Conveniently protecting your rook on e8. And I'm just lost. There's nothing to do here. Queen e4. Wow, that's an impressive game. Badly played by both. <laughs> Worse by me. Um, Alright, so we'll try to play these this last player. Blavix, you said Hikaru said the French internet was shit just one minute before he was disconnected against Ali Reza. Oh, you mean he got disconnected from America? The United States has horrible internet. I mean, maybe he pays for better, but then on average, it's really bad. I, I don't know how the French internet is. Pretty bad if you're like in the country, maybe. Something like that. I don't know. But I would imagine in the city it's good. Budapest is fine. My, my Hungarian internet is much better than my American internet. But you never know. I was pissed when Lee Chess crashed yesterday. I lost like 30 something points in a did we have this before? I lost 30 something points in a, in a rapid game. I almost never play. I and mean, what's the chances? Or my internet goes out, which never happens. It's happened. I have two disconnection losses in the last week. And one of them was my internet and once was, was Lee Chess. I've lost like 70 points in rapid in, in a week just on two games. I'm down to like 23, <laughs> 23 30 now. They're going to they're going to drop me down to internet FM. H6 is an unusual move. Probably not a bad move though. Why should H6 be bad? The idea is to um the idea is to prevent bishop g5 in the future. But here I'm winning a pawn. Now, can he play knight d4? Chupa has to try that. Knight, knight d4, knight e5, rook e8, right? And you've got pressure. I'm not sure I can take the pawn after knight d4. My last opponent needs a little opening training. Other than that, he seems good. He has a lost position in like 10 moves. <laughs> I mean, if I had been paying attention, it would have been over. I know that it sounds like crying over making excuses, you know, for what, what I did, but I mean, still, that's, that's crazy. Pawn up here. Winning position doesn't do anything for me. We've got the massive center, but we've got to play concentrate 
And um, I can come up with some more excuses. Not enough physical stimulation, exercise. Whew, that's a weakening move, dude. Wow. I don't mind if you play G5. He just has 428 open issues and 80,000 KP users. So basically one developer. Dude, what would happen if, if Debalt like got, I don't know, kidnapped for ransom or something? They must have more than one developer. I mean, they have other people, but it is kind of a scary concept. Like, at this point, when they have like 80, 90,000 people, I mean, they have to have more than one paid employee. I don't know about Knight H5. <clears throat> well, I mean, nonprofit or not nonprofit, they have to have some paid employees working for the site to keep it running. Volunteers. Some of the volunteers are not going to cut it. I mean, it depends on what you want. If you want it to be serious, just a hobby, a hobby website with, with 80,000 players. I don't want it to become commercial. I'm absolutely against that. You know, I hope it never does, but still, you know, there's no way that one person can run like a chess site like this. Well, I mean, in an era when, when people are dying left and right, yeah, I guess you should have a succession plan. <laughs> we're, we're in there with Queen C3, subtle threats. Knight F6 check is my only real threat. There's no mates, as you can see. Knight F6 check doesn't actually do anything because of King F8. It's sort of unbelievable that there's nothing here. <laughs> But it's true. Scary. I'm sure they have a bot for that, for running the site. They have double rooks. I'm really kind of an idiot not to play knight f6 check. Major idiot. I should have played it when I had the chance. There was no downside of playing knight f6 check. I don't have to take his bishop. He could just hang out and mess with his coordination, basically. His rook would have been stuck there on a8 and his king on f8 with a really unpleasant situation. This allows him to bring his rook over. Of course, his king is more cramped. I really have to go, but I'm gonna play this one last game. Sorry, Haberbaum.
Um, C6. Good patient move. So again, I'm faltering, faltering, beginning to falter. Faltering, faltering, and beginning to falter. That's what I just said. If I get tired enough and bored enough, I start playing really badly. This is very similar to last game. My opponent is just completely busted after like 15 moves. And I start kind of drifting. Now that move is a, just an absolute shock. I guess it's based on, on sort of materialistic considerations, but I was sure black was going to take with the bishop here. He doesn't want to lose the pawn on b7. Wow. That's just not good for black. That's another pass pawn for me. Even if it doesn't do anything immediately, it's strong. I wouldn't worry about losing my b7 pawn if I'm black here. <clears throat> That's the least of your problems, really. It's amazing how hard it is for white to break through, though. <laughs> Looks like a totally overwhelming advantage for white. Far from over. Unbelievable. He must like defending. Now this changes the dynamic a little bit. H3. Got to break in. Porch pirates. still playing I gotta go we are late but I promise to play one more game <clears throat> finish this one and one more game I I'll be up I already played you <laughs> that's greedy all right speaking of e4 I think it's time maybe I didn't like it structurally but I mean it's gonna work it's gonna work now. I try to limit it to one one player, one game per player. In general, unless we have no other challenges. To be kind of fair. Even for the subscribers. Yeah, he's finally capitulating. This wasn't what I would classify as a fun game for black. But under no, circum no circumstances am I letting, am I letting me have a protected pass pawn on d5. You know, that's a strange decision by black. Really not that big a deal to let me play queen takes b7. In fact, I wasn't even that confident about that. That is a huge, huge mistake for black. Just when he's like barely hanging on. I mean, let's look at this. I'd be surprised if the computer goes along with him on this. It actually doesn't think it's a big difference, but it does prefer to take with the bishop on c5. I think it's kind of a deep concept, but you know, this isn't even the best move according to the engine. That's not my big worry for black here. This disallowing this, this pass pawn is, is super dangerous. All right, last game. <laughs> and then they disappeared. All right, I'm gonna go, guys. I think that, that player is, 
is having internet issues. Anyway, it's time for me to end my stream. We'll get them later. So thanks everybody for playing. We'll be back tomorrow night. I'm gonna host a Ponda and Horses Arena. Ponda and Horses is a is a club I have here. Healthmaster, thanks for subscribing. Um, Ponda and Horses Club. Oh, they're back. All right. Well, all right. I will play. Um, the Ponda and Horses Club here on Lee Chess, Mr. Coffee. We're gonna try to do a Ponda and Horses Blitz Arena tomorrow night. Rather than just have an open arena, you'll have to add that back in. Yeah, I don't know if there's any way we can word it that it's just not mandatory. Maybe we'll just have like a floating notification to just join the just join the Pun and Horses Club um, in general or something. And we can just do it when we feel like it. More work for Mr. Coffee. The London system. I'm playing the Weed Master variation. I don't play the old Indian. This is like Simon Williams against Simon Williams. But Weed Master. This has worked well for me so far. C3 is it's playable. It's passive. We face this. It's one of the one of the many ways. The London. The many ways of London. Give me that. Pawn on G3. I played this previously. White is playing the Karo Khan defense. The Macho Khan. Karakhan is extremely solid. Why not play it with white? I'm sorry for mocking the London system. It just, it became like a sort of meme when everyone plays it and nothing else. Um, we need to take that bishop at some point. Question is when? Maxim. Not Vasher the Graf. So Bishop H4 becomes a threat here. I guess we take. But I have moved my knight twice, so it's like losing a tempo. This is not to be taken lightly. Moving the same minor piece twice, knight e4, knight f6, knight e4, knight g3, three times to be exact. Just the capture, he has to recapture. He or she has to recapture. And um, Tuesday Command successfully edited. I'd like to thank No Problem at all for doing any gift sub, and Blavix and Alexander for your kind donations today. Participating in some of those team tournaments could be fun, but less instructive, probably. Um, what are you talking about? Like when I do the the Blitz Arena? Last week was really bad though. We started to get all kinds of weird, weird players. Somehow, I don't know, it's difficult to find a happy medium. Um, leagues. Sorry, I must have missed something. Cormoran. I must have missed what you were talking about. online like chess leagues i was having this discussion earlier about it's hopeless to have tournaments on the internet a new concept but um streamer battles yeah there's a lot of stuff people are promoting gorilla gorilla leagues animal leagues you might try blobix's gorilla club Gorilla Club, what what's the deal, Blobix? You're hosting a tournament starting today. You're having like three or four tournaments a day. Can we get a little promotion for the Gorilla Club? Don't be modest. Blobix, organizing gorillas. 
He's like the Jane Goodall of the chess world. It was strange. It's very strange and I think suspicious, frankly, that for several days now we've been discussing Gorilla Club and on my Facebook, you know how you can click on Facebook like profiles of celebrities and stuff? Do you think it's a coincidence that Jane Goodall showed up as one of my suggested? <laughs> Seriously, come on now. There's no way that's... Blavik starts a gorilla club and within three days, Jane Goodall is in the selected like people for me to like, like on Facebook. There's no way that's coincidence. Absolutely 0% chance. Somebody is listening in. And there you go, Blobix. 1300. Who was it? No, it was DK Guy was complaining about this. Castling Queenside and opposite side castling in the in the Karo Khan. A thirteen hundred. Alright. I'm glad I stayed for this game, though. First of all, my favorite opening is the London system. I'm sure they knew that. Now I'm about to get, like, checkmated by 1300. This is exactly what DK Guy was talking about. Who is teaching people to castle queenside in the London system? In all seriousness. I just don't understand, really. <sighs> I didn't want to play H5, but I'm going to have to do it here. Eleven hundred in blitz, thirteen hundred in classical, and thirteen hundred in rapid. And they're trying to like brutally checkmate me. And may succeed. So white will have to like sacrifice a rook here if they want to get anything. Actually, maybe it even works. Rook takes h5 because I missed bishop h7 check. Rook takes h5, g takes h, bishop h7 check, king h8, and rook takes h5. I mean, maybe it doesn't work. I can play something crazy like knight h6, but it's scary. Really scary for me. Bishop is dangerous.
I mean, did white have a combination there that might have actually worked? Wouldn't surprise me, actually. Rook takes h5 is still possible. No, not anymore. <clears throat> Scary, though. You know, this is a 1300. What if my opponent was like 1700? I'd be walking right now. Flavix, what? You mainly pay attention to the bullet and blitz ratings. Yeah, well, I want to wait till the Swiss tournaments are kind of bugged out. You know, the bugs are taken out. Yeah, I would definitely do that. Wait till the Swiss tur tournaments are up and running properly, because there's been a lot of problems with it so far. And then, um, yeah, I, I would prefer Swiss. Arena is not my thing. I mean, it's basically for berserking. I'm not planning on like leaving the tournament. Man, White had a dangerous attack, I think. That's why people play this, but it's still, it's so weird, you know, to like play like quietly in the London system and then, and then try to attack the H file. Like you're playing the Yugoslav dragon. I want to check after this to see if this was actually somewhat on sound. But now we're up multiple pawns. Be on the cautious side here with queen f5. But I'll take an in game up three pawns any day against the player who's trying to play for mate, ideally. White's lost. Now that's a terrible move. King c1. You have to come to the center in an endgame. King is a fighting piece. It's her worst move. His or her worst move, king a1. The only really bad move they've played. I mean, maybe some tactical mistakes, but in the endgame, it's important. The piece becomes one of your best, the king. Not just about the back rank mate, but the king has to become a factor offensively, defensively for that matter, contributing, holding the seventh rank. White's been trained in this opening, but not in the end game. Um, but I think end games are way more important than openings. Basically, you play stuff like the London system so you don't have to bother to study openings. And then you can be really good at end games. All right, but I want to see this opening. Thank you. Weedmaster variation, C3. No games. That's strange. I mean, as popular as the London system is, there's no games with C3. It's a completely playable move. Grab the bishop pair here. Alejandro Needleman from Argentina. So I varied. Slachi's a little bit. He's a little bit thoughtful about the London. I improved on Alejandro Needleman. I mean, when you close the position here, you make it hard to make your bishops really great again. And I think that pushing and closing the position can be overrated. We want to make our bishops great again. So we play g6. This seems right. Knight on bd2. We transpose to another game. Now bishop g7. Now bishop d3. Here I play queen e7. And I, I should have been more careful here. This is like a red flag. White's going to castle queen side. I told DK guy that it's, oh, I usually like delay castling. C4, 
so castles like probably the best move I played c6 here also a good move castles queen side rook h2 knight f6 here h5's best move king b1 so you can play rook takes h5 g takes h5 bishop h7 check king h8 rook takes h5 knight h6 probably black is winning but i was scared you know i was kind of scared guys i'm running late and um we're gonna come back tomorrow night with our pond and horses club tournament blitz thanks everybody for playing yeah good games and uh we'll be back tomorrow night with the blitz tournament at 6 30 cet if you'd like to join you have to join our pond and horses club cormorant here join request Anyway, thanks guys, I'm running late, I gotta go. Thanks for the support, we'll be back tomorrow night. And from the Ponda, Ponda's favorite move, by the way, you know, playing H4, so. Hey, nice job with the H4, very sound. Bye-bye. <laughs>